Hello, hello, welcome back. Today it's all about character creation and you might be thinking we're making a monk. No, we are making a martial artist. Martial artist. And yes, a martial artist is essentially a warrior monk. I agree. <laughs> but it's termed the martial artist for Ultra Modern 5. So for anybody who was hoping they were going to get to a chance to... Uh, essentially make one of what I consider to be my favorite class out of all the games that you could probably, anything you could play, the martial artist is definitely up there. I'm going to put up a poll, feel free to take part in that poll. Make sure you have dice ready because you're going to be rolling some dice and making some choices. Uh, martial artists get a lot of things, so we need to actually make sure we pick everything that we need. Uh, this is obviously, um, it's not sponsored it's not sponsored by the creator of Ultra Modern, but but Chris has provided me with the resources so I can do this, okay? To make it clear. All right, so grab some food, some drink, make sure you're comfortable, and let's get started, shall we? Hi, welcome to How to RPG. My name is Fred Weller, and today I want to talk about tabletop role-playing games. We're doing character creation. If you want to make a character that's mean, lean, a fighting machine, and really only needs themselves. You don't want to go past the martial artist, which is often referred to as the monk or the warrior monk. But in this case, we're going martial artist, okay? <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through very briefly like the, the process of building an Ultra Modern 5 character just quickly, and then we're going to start doing that process. So I want you to warm up four six-sided dice people because you're going to be rolling some ability scores. Uh, Ultra Modern 5 is based off Dungeons & Dragons 5e. It uses the same engine, which means that essentially all the rules here you'll be quite familiar with, or the process at least. Of course, you still get different options that might be not available in something like the Dungeons & Dragons 5e Player's Handbook. I'm going to say it now. You may find that the martial artist outstrips the monk for D&D &D 5e. Okay, we'll, we'll see how we go though. So the first thing we're going to have to do is, we've already got our class, we know what our class is going to be. Martial artist, you'll find the classes start on page 58 and work their way through from there. The martial artist is actually on page 81, so we don't have to make that choice, that's already done. Uh, we will have to pick a birth. Now a birth is like a, selecting a race or a species, it's on page 18, I'll work our way through that. So some choices to make, a lot of different choices actually. The hat comes off people, it's getting warm today. The next one is archetypes. Now archetypes you only get at certain levels and it doesn't start till level 3 so we won't be using them today because we're only going to build a character to level 1. That'll be enough work I think. Uh, next, life path. Now life path is like a background. We're going to pick a, a life path, they're on, start on page 36. There aren't too many of them but you can also make your own. We're not going to make our own here in the live stream though. And then of course we need to have think, things like gear. Now gear starts on page 116 and it just goes on until the end of time essentially. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot of gear, okay? So we'll, we'll work our way through the gear section. There's also ladders. Now ladders are optional, you do not need to use ladders in Ultra Modern 5 and they start on page 48. They're essentially feats and it's, it's a feat tree. Essentially, you pick a feat tree that you might, might want to use or not use. You can sort of interchange them with feats anyway. So it's, yeah, it's, it's there if you want it. If you want, it, want to be thematic, you can follow this, this, these paths, these feat trees. Okay, now that that's done, normally what we do when I start a live stream is I will track the chat with my phone. So you'll see my head pointing down a lot. I'm going to be sharing the character sheet with you, the fillable character sheet which is available. I'll be showing you entries in the book um, on screen. Uh, but we usually start off with the name of a character. Okay, giving it a name of a character. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it right now. Please be gentle with the name of the character stuff because I don't, I don't want to go have my head explode. Um, so crazy, crazy, crazy names that I can't pronounce. Not, not things that I'm terribly happy about. <laughs> okay, hashtag. What is the character's name. 
Okay, what is the character's name? I think they got it all. Yep, it's all spelt correctly. Um, Loose Bree. <laughs> the rest. Yes, yes, I'm aware. Okay, all right. McFister Punch. Good lord. All right, so we've got some we've got some interesting names going on here. So I'll, I'll let you guys throw in some names. Fred Huber, thank you for being here, Fred. I do appreciate it. Fred Huber is a patron. Without patrons, essentially this program wouldn't exist. But I want to get you to start rolling some dice. So if you can come up with a name that I can use, that I can put in, great. If you can't, I want you to start rolling dice. There are six ability scores that we need to come up with. And I'm just going to take your numbers. Roll four dice. Give me all the numbers. Don't add them together, please. I'll do that, okay? Um, and uh, I'll explain the process. Hashtag. Roll 4d6 for the ability scores. Okay, hello Derp, how are you? <sighs> Names can be the hardest part. We can deal with the name later if we need to. It's alright, it would be fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. So, start rolling those dice, give me all the numbers. I will jot these things down and we're going to transfer over to my screen which I am just firing up now. And uh, yeah, we're going to spend the next uh, bit of time having some fun making a character. As you would expect, right? <laughs> anyway, here we go. This is, this is what you can see before you. So this is, we're going to be jumping back and forth from this cre um, character creation screen here with the fillable PDF to this screen here, which is where the Ultra Modern 5 is, as a PDF shows up. But um, it's page 81 where the martial artist should be showing its head. And it's not, apparently. Oh, there we go. There's the martial artist. Okay. For those of you who are wondering, um, Chris Dias, who did this, based the martial artist very, very heavily off Mortal Kombat. For those of you who are wondering, there's a lot of Mortal Kombat flavored in here. Uh, at level one, you're going to get a fighting form. You're going to get combo chains. Yes, you're going to get finishing moves. Okay. And martial exploits. That's just at level one. Um, Chris has always been quite keen on making sure that the primary aspects of your character are fulfilled early on. Um, and so that's, that's sort of how it works. So let's have a look and I will start chucking in some information i see we have one two three four five we've got all our numbers done awesome you have some very high rolls there i can see them now yes okay so let me just chuck in this information here and i will i'm going to put in at least one name here that has been suggested uh we'll just put here brie brie will do and the first one I'm, now, I'm not saying that they're going to be assigned in this order. I'm just chucking the numbers in. Don't worry about the fact that they might be going somewhere else. So, Derp, you have rolled a 6, a 2, a 4, and a 5. So, we drop the lowest number, which is the 2. We add that together. It comes to 15, which is a very high number. So, 15 in there. Our next one is from... Um, Yes, Fred Hoobers are optional. If somebody else rolls dice, then great. Um, so we've got here, we'll take Derp again, and then we'll take Pale Rider. How's that? Thank you, Fred. I do appreciate it. Really do. Uh, six, four, one, and five. Drop the one. It's another 15. Okay, so that's from Derp. 15. And then Pale Rider, you have rolled six, six, five, and four. Okay, so we drop the four, which is the lowest number, add those numbers together. Six and six is 12, and five is 17, which is a very high number. We've got some high stats today. When people say, oh, this rolling stats is, is not a problem, it's never going to be busted. Uh, yeah, come on. Seriously, can be. Can go the other way as well. <laughs> um, next, Pale Rider, you have rolled. So, Fred, you've rolled a 4, 4, 3, 1. Uh, but since Pale Rider's getting in, in, in here today with some dice rolling, we'll do that. Uh, I've got that one. 
next all right here so six five five and three drop the three it's the lowest number uh it comes out as 16. oh my gosh there really are some high numbers today uh last two <clears throat> hello dungeons and chronics you'll have to be in here, get in here quick if you want to roll some dice i'm almost finished putting putting the entries in um derp pale rider has rolled a six a six and a six and a two which comes out drop the two comes out an 18. good lord 18. anybody else here want to roll some dice you're welcome to do so and the last set of numbers uh rolling in we'll go we're going to go to fred huber your first set of numbers you got a six five four and a one six five four and a one so we drop the one and we went up with a 15. okay all right so we've got our numbers in 15. okay so don't worry about them they can be moved around that that's not necessarily with our locked in for now so don't freak out please okay now rather than going through all of the different things regarding the martial artist uh, because that takes a bit of time I want to keep moving forward and getting you making choices okay so martial artist that's what we're doing uh, archetype we're not going to do that not applicable because we're not going to level three ladder we'll see uh, level one level one for today um, deal with that in a second race we'll deal with in a second and zero inspiration you haven't even had a chance to play just like 5e uh, at level one you're going to get a proficiency bonus of plus two it's exactly the same process and now it's about going through and selecting our first thing which is going to be our birth or race or species so i'm going to go through them now okay so you can choose so 18 bum, bum, bum. does this does this need dex or strength I don't know this class system. So, so do part of your martial artist, okay? Part of your martial artist, and when you build your martial artist, is a thing called fighting form. And fighting form, you have to make a decision. Is your martial artist a dex-based martial artist, or is your martial artist a strength-based martial artist? You get to choose, okay? Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I, I got third done black belt uh, many years ago when I was younger. And obviously I couldn't do anything now. I, I'm, a, I'm like a stay puffed marshmallow man, man now. But um, the reality is that you can use speed or you can use strength in terms of martial arts. Okay, it's always good to have a bit of both. But uh, most people's bodies are built to do one or the other rather than both. And the idea is, you know, if whatever you're weakest at, you build that up over time. So if you're quite strong, then you build up your speed. And if you're quite fast, then you build up your strength. But um, you usually are generally have a, a prefer preference to how you, you operate. So you actually pick that. Does that make sense? So we can go dex-based if we want to, or we can go strength-based. It, it, frankly, it doesn't matter. I'll go through all that stuff in a second. But let me just at least get us choosing a birth. All right, so here are the births, and I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. <clears throat> so the first one is the, the red-capped, multi-armed alien creature, the Kony, 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 I think it's called the Kony. I'm not going to go over all the different abilities because we've kind of done that before, but you can see basically what it looks like. That's the Kony, so we could pick that one if we wanted. Might be fun to do a Kony, actually. Uh, I think we might have actually done one recently. Yes, we have. We have. Uh, this is the insect-like creature, which basically has multiple arms and so forth. And this is called the Gatine. Um It's got some benefits. We'll get to that. I'm not going to go through them all. Yes, you have spider climb, stuff like that. Uh, next, the altered, where you can be slightly different. You can alter your arms, your hands. So... We'd, I think we did this last week. We used the altered last week. So we had a whole lot of mutations we had to select from. So um, you can change your arms. Your, you can be aquatic. You can have a carpus. You can have chompers. You can have different types of arms, a big nose, uh, deformities, um, digigrade, enhancement, fine hairs. You can be fragile. 
Uh, you might have iron nails, you might have rhino hide, uh, a simple deficiency of some kind, keen eyes, keen hearing, large, you might be large in size, you might have a lot more legs, you might have a metabolic disease or your metabolism might be different, you might be slow, you might increase your speed, tail, wicked tongue, wings, quills, mute, things like that. There's lots of things you can do with the altered. There's all of, also the animalist. The animalist is basically a humanoid animal and you pick the animal type that you want, okay? And what is this? I see people putting in Dex, Dex, all right. Calrel, hello, Calrel. And Dungeons and Chronics, thank you for being here. It looks like people want to go with the Dex one. I haven't even read it out what the Dex one is, but you'll see. You'll get a choice. Don't worry, it's coming. Um, animalist. I will type in pick a race, hashtag, pick a birth or race. That's basically what it is. So the animalist, we get the ape version, we get the badger, the elephant, the bat, the frog, the bear, the goat, the boar, the crocodile, the hawk. We have the shark, we have the horse, the possum, the tiger, turtle, wolf, rabbit, and the rat. Okay, automation. If we want to be a robot of some kind or an automation, we can be an android. You can either take the android version or we take the robot version. The android version means you look more human and the robot version means you look more like a robot. There's also human. Human, frankly, is pretty boring. You're probably not going to be terribly excited by the human, but that's to be expected. It is a human after all. Animalist weasel. <laughs> nice. Uh, morpher. Now the morpher is basically you are a strange alien that changes and transforms. Okay, it's it's pretty outrageous. Uh, so you can transform, form shields, form weapons. Um, you can change your shape. And yes, this horrible conglomeration is potentially what you might be. If you don't like that idea, that's cool. That's fine. Next, splice. This is where you take human DNA and you splice it with an animal. It's kind of like the animalist, but less animal and more human. Okay, so you have things like the bat as a um, spliced subrace. You have the bear, beetle, bee, cat. You can do it with the viper, the chameleon, the dolphin, the eagle, the horse, the wolf, the wolverine, the rabbit, the rat, and the spider. You can also have the tuna. The tuna is essentially a, a psyker. It's like a human, human psyker. Okay, they look very humanish. And uh, yes, you've got some sort of magical powers or whatever. Um, yokai, the yokai, pff, the yokai, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on. I don't think we've done the yokai, and it's, <clears throat> you, you have a beast former, basically. It's like, a, it's a, yeah, it's a transforming thing. It's a transforming thing. Okay, so those are the things that you could potentially have. Human, splice wolverine, animal, weasel. Okay, so you guys are making some choices and decisions. That's good. <clears throat> While you are continuing to, to make decisions about what you would like, I'm going to fill in a few more of the details on this character sheet here. So back we go. So over here for our <clears throat> various things. So fighting form. So fighting form. Uh, we'll make sure that's there. And the other one is combo chain. Combo chain is very much got a very a very mortal combat feel to it. <clears throat> and then martial exploit. Martial exploit. Okay. And we'll get to that soon enough. Alright. So it looks to me like it is a toss-up between the animalist and the the spliced wolverine or the human derp you voted twice but i'm assuming your second choice is the one you want splice wolverine so i'm going to do a roll off if somebody doesn't um throw in a um a, a, a deciding vote oh fred hooper here you go wolverine with adamantian claws oh i see what you're trying to do here <coughs> Wolverine, I, th <laughs> I should have guessed. Okay.
I should have guessed. Okay, so let's do, um, I believe the easiest way to do that one is through the spliced Wolverine option. So we're going to go splicing today. This is These are our options. This is the stuff we get. <clears throat> now we're going to get one ability score improvement as part of being the splice thing. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Don't worry about that. Our size, like humans, okay, you tend, to, you tend to be medium in size, so we don't have to worry about that here. Speed is 30 feet. We can transfer that over right now. So do 30 feet. Um, and our, uh, where is it? Ah, here we go. Splice. Matthew, a spliced mouth, mouse? I don't, are we going to have a rat? I don't think we can have a mouse, though. I feel like the Wolverine is winning, winning over at this per, um, present time, Matthew, but you are a new person. So if I can find the mouse, which I don't know if there is necessarily a mouse, I think we've got rat. <coughs> Horse, rat. We can go rat. That's fine. Okay, spliced rat. There you go, Matthew. Stay with us, Matthew, because I'm putting your character name down. I'm hoping that you're going to come stay with us and, and make some decisions about this today. Matthew, there we go. We've got your name in there. Derp and Fred Huber will keep uh, throwing in their two cents. So we've got that. And next, uh, now the rat. We're going to get an increase to our dexterity score by two because we are a rat. Robust. Robust for a rat is you are immune to natural disease. So we're going to take that now, drop it into a character sheet right this second. Normally I would just go straight into, let's just deal with the um, the choices thing. But since the rat is actually pretty easy to deal with, we will do it now. Okay. And that robust... That's your first feature, <clears throat> uh, or major feature related to the rat. Keen sense, so we'll grab this one here as well. So you have advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on smell. So we'll put that in there. Okay, so that's what you get. Um, and we'll just move this along. We're going to get you to select a background people in a second. I'm going to show you what those choices are in a, in a very shortly. But I want to get this done because I smell a chance for me to actually get through the race section much faster than normal, which I really like. <laughs> I really like the idea a lot. Uh, you speak common. Okay, so languages. So we go back to languages. Languages. And we get common. And we'll probably get some more languages, more than likely, depending on our birth. Uh, our, sorry, our life path. Subrace, these are num numerous. Okay, so we've got that bit. We've got that bit. We'll come back to this. Let's deal with our life path. Life path is on page 36. <clears throat> that is the next choice we need to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the different life paths. We're not going to make a life path, and you're going to select the one that you like the most to fit with the martial artist spliced rat, okay? Okay, let's just see if this is actually going to work. Need some water. I smell blood, and it's good. Okay, pick a life path life path that's not a path life path life that's not not Luke oh yeah, yeah life path or background that's what it essentially is background okay it's in let's show you what there is <coughs> pardon me change of weather and I'm getting affected by it obviously so you can make your own life path in this game I'm not going to be doing that today I'm just going to go through what you get okay you can be affluent as if you are affluent you get to select between deception and persuasion as skills that you're proficient in tool proficiency pick a musical instrument you get two extra languages you get some fine clothes two hundred dollars 
and a fancy wallet, okay? As a bruiser for your background, I'm not going to read out the, um, each one of these things. I'm just going to go through kind of very quickly what they are. Select your um, skill proficiencies, athletics or acrobatics. So that's the bruiser. Might be quite suitable for this. Languages, pick one. Uh, equipment, you get a trophy from a fight. You get $20 and some common clothes, okay? We have the delinquent. You either pick sleight of hand or deception as your skill that you're proficient with. You get thieves tools as a tool proficiency. Languages, you get one, you get common clothes, and you get $15, okay? <clears throat> Disciple, well, pick religion or nature as your skill. Languages, you get one. Equipment, you get a holy item, and you get some books, a symbol, and some common clothes. As a drifter, if you want to be a drifter, select deception or survival, not both. Uh, two languages. You get a set of common clothes, backpack, bedroll, blanket, five dollars in coins. Yeah, you don't have you don't have bills. Uh, intellectual. You select either engineering or science. You get two languages. You get a set of common clothes, handful of textbooks, and fifteen dollars in your wallet. Okay, the laborer. I know that sounds weird, people. Uh, pick a skill um, proficiency, either animal handling or athletics. Tool proficiency is one set of artisan tools. You get one language. You get a set of artisan tools. $50. Okay. <clears throat> progeny. For progeny, you, you select either athletics or performance. You get a tool proficiency, which can be one musical instrument or an artisan tool, whatever you prefer. Uh, one language. You get one musical instrument or one artisan tool. You decide. Uh, you get a trophy and $15. As a recluse, you're going to get... <clears throat> Skill proficiency will be computer use or investigation. You get two languages. Equipment is a set of common clothes, personal computer, $20 in prepaid cards, and $10 in your wallet. As a regular Joe, if you want to be a regular Joe, uh, you can have any skill you like. Pick one skill. Okay. Tool proficiency, any one tool or vehicle of your choice. One tool or vehicle proficiency. You pick. Could be ground, could be air, could be a tool of some kind. You get one language, $50 in your wallet, and that's it for you. Uh, next. Your smooth talker gets persuasion or intimidation. You get one gaming set as a, as a tool proficiency. You get one language, one game set, <clears throat> a fine set of clothes, $50 in your wallet. Okay, that's it. So those are all the choices there. So make a decision about which life path you would prefer and we'll go and I'll stick that in okay I'm going to obviously be talking way too much and I have I want to have a drink of water probably a lozenger as well <clears throat> a sewer dweller um, are splices always splices or did they become that uh, I don't remember I believe I believe that they were spliced at some point. I, 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 yeah, I, I think it doesn't matter necessarily. I didn't actually read into fine detail about that particular point. I think it can go either way. I don't think he's necessarily nailed it down. So you can change the sort of um, the law behind that if you wanted to. You always could anyway. A regular Joe or a laborer. Okay. So Derp has gone with, let's go with, now there's no sewer dweller. But um, if you want to have um, the regular Joe or Labourer, I'm fine with that. Um, Matthew, are you voting for today? I don't know. You tell me. I'm going to put down. I'm going to roll off between the regular Joe and the Labourer unless somebody breaks the, um, the tie. <clears throat> Since there is no sewer dweller that I can see here, <laughs> I can't use that one. All right. So re regular Joe is one to three. Four to six is going to be the labourer. Regular Joe. Okay. Regular Joe. You're a regular Joe. Regular Joe. Okay. Um, and as part of your regular Joe stuff, you get some things. Pick a skill then. Matthew, what do you got here? What do you got, Matthew? Perhaps the splice was a science pro yeah, project or a laboratory bitten. Yeah, it could be anything. It could be anything. Don't think it really, I don't think we need to tie ourselves down to, to that too much. 
Oh, you want the laborer? Of course you do. Okay, all right. You broke the tie, we're going laborer. Laborer. Uh, is that how he spells it? He's, he's American, so he's probably spelt it incorrectly. Yep, Chris spells, spells everything incorrectly. Um, I'm in New Zealand people, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this occasionally. <laughs> okay, so the laborer. I'm gonna take out the U because it's apparently it's the laborer. A bacon cook, a laborer who's a bacon cook. Are we really going down that track? I feel like I feel like you're having me having me on. Um, next, you need to pick some skills, right? So let's let's do the picking of the skills thing. Um, hashtag. Pick, pick a skill. And the skills you can select are animal handling, handling, or athletics. It's probably going to be athletics, isn't it? If you are a monk, it's probably going to be athletics. Okay, so you're going to make a choice about which one you would like to have. While you're doing that, I'm going to give you $50, $50 in your pocket into the gold section. Uh, so we've got a little bit of money. Not a lot, but a little, a little bit. And a set of artisan tools. We'll do, do that in a second once we've decided what artisan tool you really want to have. Labourer. Labourer. <laughs> um, it's all right, Matthew. <laughs> Fred Sins says athletics. Okay. Well, unless Matthew says otherwise, I guess it's going to be athletics. Athletics. Okay. And uh, we need to pick one artisan tool and one language. So let's do pick a pick an artisan art. Art, oh my god, artisan tool. We need an artisan tool proficiency. Okay, so decide what that would like you would like to have, and that's what we'll put down. All right, and we need a mining mining pick for tools. Mining pick for tools. Oh, I see what you're saying here. Hmm. Okay. Do I need to show you all the artisan tools? I'm just wondering if maybe I need to actually show you every single artisan tool. Languages, we can just sort of make stuff up with that one. Um, hashtag. Select a language or make one up. We've been doing that as a lot because it's, you know, how about rope tying knot skills? Okay, all right. So let's let's have a look here. Let's have a look here. I don't. Um, you you guys have got me uh, on my, on back feet here just a little bit. So if I go to a gear, which is one one six, and I scroll down, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. The gear section starts. Right, so artisan tools should be in this section, if I am correct. Yes, I believe so. Artisan tools, artisan tools, heavy weapons, lots of things like that. I don't think a martial artist is necessarily going to have a grenade launcher, by the way, people. So don't get too excited. Um, you might have some explosives, I guess. But let's have a look. Arson tools. Oh, blimey, there's so much stuff here. Did you make it easy for me to find? No, that's ammunition. No. Is it after all of the the, the, the explosives, the, the guns, and the armor? I suppose that's what's going to happen, right? I'm gonna, oh, here we go. We're getting into armor now. There's a lot of armor. I don't think you're going to need armor. You're a martial artist. Why would you need armor? Um, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 
Artisan tools, artisan tools. I just assumed you guys would pick some artisan tools from D&D um, 5e and would be done, but apparently we're playing we're playing my ultra modern 5 here, so that doesn't happen. Shields, let's move past that. Gear, right, finally, gear. All right, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, so we just got to find, what page is this? This is 154. Utilities, our oh, toolkits, here we go. Engineering kit. That, that, that's that. Did you give me a ni nice table? Just give me a table with all the stuff. Housing, transport, lodging, services. No, that's not what I want. Um, cosmetics. Cybernetics. No, we don't want cybernetics. Not yet. We haven't chopped off an arm yet. Uh, vehicles. Oh, God, is he going to have it last? Ground vehicles. I haven't had to pick anything from ground vehicles for a long time. Um, all flying vehicles. Oh my! Aircraft. Remember, you can be proficient with aircraft uh, <laughs> uh, in this game. Pick the right stuff and you can wind up with an aircraft proficiency. Some of the classes even give you it. Okay, so this is, this is not helping me. Come on, Chris. Make it easy for me. Tool, tell. You want the tell tool. I just want artisan tools. If you've got an, you've got an index here, so I might be able to find it, right? Artisan. Art, 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 art. Art. Really? Artificial. What about tools? Is it under tools? Tool, tool, tool. Tool kits. I guess it's under toolkits, which is 154, which I just was at not that long ago. <sighs> okay, all right. Not helpful, Chris. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can find Arsenal 154. Speed, gear. Energy shields. Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. Go the other way. Timers. Tool kits. Engineer's kit. Skills. Drug kit. Medical kit. I, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, utilities. Flares. He, I just don't know which, where he's decided to stick it or what he's called it. It's probably called something else. Okay, let's just do, do what we've got here. Tinker's tools. That'll do. Yeah. It's probably an engineer's kit. It'll be an engineer's kit. Let's just do that. That's going to make life so much easier for me. <laughs> All right. So um, under life. Oh, it's under proficiencies, isn't it? Engineer's kit. All right. That's our tool proficiency. Engine, engine, engine. Ears. Come on, Fred. Engineers. Kit. Oh. Cruise missile mechanic. Second. <laughs> Mad idea. <laughs> nice. Oh, dear. Calrel. Back to white phosphorus grenades again, eh? Cell phone batteries. Sockets. Industrial adhesive. <laughs> no tables. Okay. All right. I think the engineer's kit is kind of what you're after, roughly. Let's just say that's that's going to cover it pretty extensively. Okay, so that's that. That's that one. So that's the thing you're apparently, you know, skills, intelligence, engineering. So you're probably going to have to make sure you get engineering at some point. Okay. <sighs> Talk about some fun trying to get that sorted out. Next. Make sure I got all of the stuff from the life path into this thing, since we are a laborer. Do we have a language? Did somebody come up with a language? We still have an extra language we need to get. <clears throat> Plus one. If you come up with a language, great. If you don't, we figure it out later. So tool proficiency, and we need an artisan tool, so we're going we're gonna to get <clears throat> an engineer's kit. Engineering kit.
There we go, engineer's kit, done. 10 pounds away, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go back to where we need to, to, to return to, which is to the class, because there are some choices around the class that need to be made, okay? And I need to read through them, and there's a few. So, <clears throat> 81. Bum, bum, bum. Come on, move, baby, move. There we go, it's a big document. All right, so at level one, we're going to get, uh, it's a D10 for our, our hit points. So we get 10 plus our constitution modifier. We'll deal with that later. We get um, light armor proficiency. So you can wear armor as a martial artist. Light, light armor. And what else do you have here? So you get all simple weapon, melee weapons, all one-handed small arms, so that's firearms, and select four martial melee weapons. So you get quite a few things. So those are all proficient. We will drop that in and move that along. Make sure we've got that all there. And small arms. Okay, all right, next. Uh, we also get tool proficiency, all ground vehicles and aircraft. Yeah, I know. So you can fly aircraft and use ground vehicles as a martial artist. How's that for fun? Okay, next. So your saving throws, Proficiency in strength and dexterity. Those are the ones that we, we mark off. So strength and dexterity. Done. You get to select three skills from acrobatics, animal handling, athletics, history, insight, intimidation, perception, and survival. Okay. So pick some skills. Hashtag pick three skills. You've already got athletics, so don't bother getting that one again. Okay. Uh, editorial note, this class revolves around building up successive hits to, active potent, um, to activate a potent finishing move. Yes, very Mortal Kombat-y. Uh, players are invited to be creative in how they move and strike opponents. Very true. Um, <laughs> so I see you guys have been sort of um, throwing a whole lot of ideas out there. Oh, did you? All right. Okay, I see some languages there. Let's chuck in some chuck in a language there. Ferengi. <laughs> Ferengi. Got it. Perception, acrobatics, perception, survival. Fred has put in his votes. Right. What are the rest of you going to vote for? Yeah. Have you decided? Okay. So. With our equipment, we'll deal with equipment soon enough, but not just yet. So you start with, and you get um, one, a simple melee. You get a simple melee as part of your gear. You get one handed small arm. So you get something to shoot with. And it ha can't be more than 300, that's fine. Um, you get a set of armor, which will be light armor. Armor. Can't be more than 300. We'll deal with that soon enough. We'll deal with that last. And we get additional gear at 100, so we can just transfer that into our 50. So 150. <coughs> oh. Engineering, not tying, and boxing. <laughs> it's not the skills that I mentioned, though, Matthew. Engineering is uh, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit tricky. <laughs> um, what we can do here, what we will do is we'll take out our background was labourer, and we had picked athletics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift the athletics over to engineering. So we're doing a modification to a background. Okay, 
easy way to for those of you who are playing D and D five E and you get a background and somebody doesn't have a specific skill somewhere, just shift things out. Easy enough to do. So we've got engineering now, um, and we'll take up um, which one? Perception. You had acrobatics. It's going to be either acrobatics or um, um, athletics. Could be both if you wanted, frankly. Uh, if you don't vote, he takes mine. If you don't, yeah, I get it. I get it. Not tying and boxing aren't aren't there. So, so what we'll do is we'll put perception in. Perception. So one, two. That's three. We need one more. And you had had acrobatics here, so we can mark down acrobatics as well. Acrobatics, athletics, engineering, perception. Okay, so we've got our skills sorted out. Well done. Nicely done. Thank you very much. Dun, dun, dun. All right, we're going to select a fighting form. Now, I did say with your fighting form, you have to decide on whether it's dexterity or strength. Now, so far, people have been saying, we want dexterity. But let me read the section out to you before you make your decision. Okay, because... It's not as simple as that. There's a little bit more going on. At first level, select your either dexterity or strength as your ability for attack and damage rolls. So that's what you do. Okay, that's part of your fighting form. But if you select dexterity, this is how it works. If you use dexterity as your attack and damage ability, you gain the following abilities. When reaching... Combo Chain Tier 2, you gain a plus one bonus to melee attack rolls. Okay? You add half your dexterity modifier rounded down to your normal dexterity modifier when determining your armor class with light armor, effect effectively multiplying your um, by 1.5 your modifier. Okay? So your modifier will be a bit bigger. If you have a dexterity bonus of 4, it will be actually a plus six that is to determine your armor class so the calculation is a little bit different you can use dexterity acrobatics instead of strength athletics to make or sustain a grapple check so that is the dexterity option the strength option if you would prefer that works this way if you use strength as your attack damage ability you gain the following abilities you gain a plus one bonus to all melee damage rolls. Does that make sense? You get a plus one to all melee damage rolls. Okay, cool. Whereas the dex one is to attack rather than to damage. You gain proficiency with all medium and heavy armor if you take the strength option. You have advantage when attempting to shove a target. A shoved um, creature is pushed 10 feet in, um, away instead of 5 feet so you push them further away so this is why you have to make a decision about which one you prefer because it's not just as simple if I pick dexterity then I'm using that for my calculating my attack and my damage and if I pick strength that's what I'm using to calculate my attack and my damage no, there's more to it than that so hello Nacho, Nacho is a patron thank you for being here, pick Fighting form. Form. And it is dexterity or strength. Now that you can see what they are, it probably make a little bit more sense as to what decision you choose or what, what you choose. Okay, so you make a decision. I'll pick that one. We're all good and ready to move on. <clears throat> and okay uh, ch -ch -ch, I've got to walk a few miles to replenish water and food supplies you'll probably be done by the time I'm back no problem Sturp hey thank you for showing up I do appreciate it always good to get that exercise in so yeah go do that by all means do that thank you for being here so how are people thinking in terms of what, what they want to do do they, you want to do the dexterity one or the strength one have a think about that. Make a choice. <clears throat> While you're making a choice, I'm going to read out how our combo chain works. Okay, because strength, Matthew likes the idea of the strength one. Okay, that's fine. 
I will grab all of this. <clears throat> Pardon me. Strength. And the information for it is quite extensive. I'm going to have to try to shorten it all down. Um, use strength as your attack and ability. Okay, so. Let's use strength as your attack and abil um, ability. Um, uh, that's for the bonus. Come on. Ability. Bonus, okay. You gain, so plus one to all melee damage rolls. Uh, you gain proficiency of all medium and heavy armor, and you have advantage when attempting to shove a target. Okay, so we've got that sorted out. Right. Wonderful. Oh, kal has gone dex. Of course you have. I've just, I've just plonked it all in. <laughs> anyway, combo chains. Let me read out the combo chain section. Okay, there aren't a lot of choices here, but there's a lot of nuance, and I can't go over everything because it is so much, but let me at least read some of it so you can see what's going on here. So the combo chain and how that works. Starting at first level, you gain the ability to string fighting maneuvers together to unleash more powerful attacks. You always begin a battle at on tier 1, inflicting 1d6 damage with unarmed attacks. Okay, there's none of this D4 nonsense, people. If on your turn you score at least one melee hit, then at the beginning of your next turn, you advance to the next tier. <clears throat> In other words, as long as during your, your attacks you hit at least once, okay, during your turn, you can then proceed to the next tier when you have another turn. You must have hit an enemy at least once during your turn to move up uh, on your next turn and you can only advance their tier once per turn so you can't advance the tier okay uh, more than once during a turn so some some provisors so you're not going to be able to do a whole lot of finishing moves in the same turn it doesn't work that way <clears throat> on tiers two three four and five after hitting a target you can perform a finishing move. If you don't perform a finishing move, the combo chain can continue. But if, of course, if you do use the finishing move, then the combo chain will not continue. When you perform a finishing move or fail to make an attack during your turn, let me just go down here, you restart the combo chain at tier one. Okay. Ah, uh, come on, you got to be kidding me. Tier 1. Let's see if I can just, can I highlight just that bit? There, something like, ah, oh, never mind. Okay, uh, you must decide to perform a finishing move after a successful attack and on the same turn, a, um, same, same turn as one. When you reach the maximum tier allowed by your level, you can sustain um, um, you can sustain the chain and your damage dice for as long as you wish, but the momentum you commit the, the moment you commit a uh, uh, commit to a finishing move, you revert back to tier one. You can keep your chain while changing targets, so you can change targets even if you've got your your tier of attacks continuing on. So <clears throat> there's a few different things going on here that make it a little bit more complicated. So playing a monk is not as easy as you hit and that is it, or you stun them, okay? It's a bit more. Um, at first level, you can only string, let me go up here, string, combo chains to tier one. So, to tier, th to tier three, sorry. So starting, so look at here, at first level, you can only string combo chains to tier three. This increases to tier four, at level 9 when your character reaches level 9 when you're level 13 you can string it up to level um to tier 5 so there is a limit to the the number of tiers you can string your combos to okay next you can use melee weapons with combo chain 
with the combo chain, but utilize the damage, uh, the table's damage die instead of the weapons. So, <clears throat> if you have an ability that increases the damage of your unarmed attack, your damage die may change, but your tier does not. So the tiers always stay the same. So this is what the finishing moves tend to look like. The table finishing moves, tier one. Okay, remember, finishing move, there's nothing. With a D6, that's it, it's just tier one. Tier two, okay, you're going to be doing 1D8 damage, unarmed, da um, unarmed um, strike damage, and your finishing moves, you can break, um, bone breaker, circular attack, ground pounder, um, surge punch, um, surge punch counter, soul fist, spinning attack, uh, oh no, hand, it's that, that's for the other one. So that's surge power, surge punch. So tier three, a D10, that's your damage. Okay, it's counter, soul fist, um, spinning attack, and run boo. Uh, tier four is a D12, and that is the zone, touch of death, drop hammer, uh, Zion. And then tier five is 2D6, ultra, falcon punch, sun goku, uh, Satu, Setsu, Sanguku Setsu, and Limit Break. Okay, so I could read through all of these tiers if you really wanted me to. It'd take me a while and it might break my voice. So you need to let me know if you want me to go through all of them. Hello, Nemo. How are you doing? Love this channel. Love the Ultra Modern, by the way. Okay, good. You are welcome. Right, let me go through something that where you actually get to make a choice about things. Because that is a lot of information to understand, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the combo chain thing here. And I'm just going to copy this little bit here for now. Okay, there's no way I can put that into the character sheet. It would be just too much. So combo chain. You are level 1. Okay, so paste. Okay, starting at level one, you get a da 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 da. We've got all this, and we just shift this around. Oh, come on, what did that do? I I, I pressed there. There, there. Okay, there we go. That's that helped. That moved things around a little bit. Okay, that's that bit. Phew. All right. Now, your maximum tier when you are level one. Remember, the maximum tier that we can get to is um, a string or chain that goes up to tier three. Max combo uh, tier three. So we just make sure we make a note of that. All right, martial arts exploit. Let's do the martial arts exploit before I lose my voice because that's quite possible it will happen otherwise. Martial arts exploit at first level. You can select one martial exploit from the list. You gain additional exploits at 2nd level, 5th level, 8th, 11th, 14th, 17th, and level 20. Each martial arts exploit can only be selected once. Okay. Now I have to go through them all. <sighs> ground pound, yeah, ground pound might have benefits for, for both, yes. Potentially, I I'm, just let me get, let me get through the um, the martial exploits. I know you guys really want me to go through the finishing moves stuff, um, but I'm gonna I want to I want to finish selecting stuff because this this gets a little bit complicated. Here we go. Martial exploit. So CC combo breaker. So the triple C combo breaker. If the same creature in a single round uh, hits you twice. You can perform a single melee attack against the trigger t triggering creature as a reaction to the second attack that they make. If you hit, inflict normal damage and the, tar uh, and the target's um, turn ends. So you end their turn, which is pretty good. Hashtag pick a martial exploit. Oh my gosh. All right, let me read through them. I can see people making some um, decisions already. Next, calisthenics. You gain a plus one 
two damage bonus to melee damage roll. So it's a plus one to your damage bonus, basically. Yep. Um, gun something something. Gun something something? You treat one-handed small arms as melee weapons when attacking targets at five feet or closer. Additionally, all ranged attacks with one-handed small arms made against targets five feet or closer can be considered melee attacks. So you can shoot somebody right up in their face. So gun something something. This feels very much like John Wick or um, Equilibrium with, um, what's his name? With Chris? The guy who did Batman. You know, you know who I'm talking about. And Keanu Reeves who did, uh, it's like the gun carter, isn't it? It's very gun cartery. The gun something something. <laughs> Next, chain boost. Instead of using your hit dice to recover hit points during a short rest, you can expend them to increase your combo chain. Use a bonus action and spend 1d4 uh, hit dice, recover no hit points, and instead increase your combo chain by that same value. Once you use this ability, you cannot use it again until you have finished a short or a long rest. Hello, JP. <clears throat> How you doing, JP? Hi Fred, uh, the game looks awesome, should try this on our group, just like the modern version of The Monk in 5e. I can see Misty, the martial artist. So JP, remember I'm building a, um, a monk class, and um, I still have a few more fighting styles to add here. So um, I feel like you might like the monk that I've developed. Um, and, you know, I might use some ideas from here, but we'll see how we go. We'll see how we go. Anyway. And yes, we could probably port over the martial artist to a 5e game. You're quite right. <laughs> um, JP's in my home group, people. That's what's going on here. All right, marker. When you hit an enemy that is in your reach, it has disadvantage on any attacks that don't include you as the target until the end of your next turn. Okay, the effect ends if you are reduced to zero hit points. You move out of reach of that enemy. Uh, okay, you move out of the reach of that enemy. So you have zero hit points or you move out of the reach of that enemy, but not if the enemy moves out of reach of you. So in other words, you, 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 it's like the 4E mechanic, the marking mechanic in 4E. It's what it is. Uh, news are, you are a mast, master at ground fighting. You gain the following benefits for ground fighting. If a creature breaks from your grapple, you can use your reaction to attempt a grapple check on the same target. Uh, you have a plus two bonus to armor class against any creature you are grappling. You do not have um, disadvantage on melee attacks while prone, which would be nice. Makes sense. Um, enemies do not have advantage on you while uh, uh, on you with non non reach melee attacks if you are prone. Okay. I don't know why it would matter with a, a, a reach weapon because I've always found when they taught me how to fight on the ground, it would not matter if they were up close and punching or they had a weapon or if they had a reach weapon. In fact, um, a reach weapon makes it even easier to avoid getting hit. Um, it actually becomes a problem for them. Pound for pound. You are a superior fighter in all respects. If a creature moves away from you, even with the disengage action, you can use your reaction to move up to your speed with it. Or you just follow them to wherever they go. That would be very annoying. <laughs> Next, redirection of energy. When an enemy scores a critical hit on you with a melee attack, you gain temporary hit points equal to the amount of damage dealt. Really? Well, that's very handy. When you use this exploit, you cannot use it again until you finish a long rest. Additionally, any time a creature scores a critical hit on you with a melee attack, you have advantage on melee attacks against that creature until the end of your next turn. Well, essentially, basically that would mean that you... I mean, you could literally stop yourself from dying with that feature. So probably a reason why you have to finish a long rest to get it back again. Okay. Um... Rhythm string. After performing a finishing move, the tear of said finishing move is a bonus you receive on your next melee attack. God, that's a really complicated. After performing a finishing move, got it. The tear of said finishing move 
is a bonus you receive on your next melee attack. I can't get it. So if the tier that you reach is tier 3 and you use the finishing move, then the bonus to your melee attack is going to be a 3 at tier 1. For example, you go, um, if you perform a tier 5 finishing move, your next attack at tier 1 receives a plus 1 bonus. Yeah, I get it. It's what I, it's what I was describing. Tag team. If an ally hits an enemy within 5 feet of you with a melee attack, you can deal additional damage to that hit equal to your strength or dexterity modifier as a reaction. This does not count towards your combo chain. Interesting. Ultra. After hitting a creature, instead of your combo chain tier, you instead in, increase your combo chain tier by one and perform a finishing move. Okay. After hitting a creature, increase your combo chain tier by one and perform a finishing move. You must have access to the higher tier after using ultra. You can use it again, and you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So basically if I was level one and I get to tier two and I do the finishing move, I can push it to a tier three finishing move. But at level one, I can't go beyond tier three, right? For a finishing move. Okay, I got it, I understand. There's a lot of information here, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting here. There's a lot of options here. Unarmed expanded profile. Spend 30 feet of movement and your unarmed attacks have reached until the beginning of your next turn. Really? So you increase your reach? Interesting. Uh, vicus, vicus hook. What is it? Vicus, vicious, oh, visit, vicious, vicious hook. Pre, so you have to be level 10 to use it though. Your melee attack score. Your melee attacks score a critical hit on a natural roll of a 19 or 20. All right, so it changes. It's basically improved critical, isn't it? Vicious hook is just improved critical, and you don't get it to level 10. Okay, wrestler. You're a classic brawler. You gain the following benefits. If you are grappling a target, you have half cover from attacks from other targets. Additionally, any time attack that misses. You, by five or less, hits your grappled target instead. Oh, okay. Uh, when you um, move a grappled target your size or smaller, your speed is not reduced. Oh, really? So you can drag them around a little bit more. Well, that would be handy, I guess. Okay, so I'm sure that some of you have voted. Let's see, let's see what uh, you have picked as an exploit. There's been a few there to select from. <clears throat> and then we're going to go over to finishing moves. The different tiers and the different things that you can do. The crazy stuff that you can try to perform. Bum, bum, bum. <clears throat> okay. So, based off the choices selected so far, we have chain boost. I don't remember. The, was there a chain boost? There was a chain something. Oh, chain boost was one that was um, selected. Chain boost. Um, and then we had ground pound. Now, where is ground pound? Oh, is it pound for pound? Ground pound, chain boost. Looks like it's going to be chain boost. That's fine. We'll, cha we'll chain boost it. <coughs> this is the one that has been selected for, for this, this, this run. Okay. That's fine. Let's do that. Chain boost it is. Chain boost. Whoopsies. There we go. Chain boost. Let me drop this in. And we're going to go through all of the different tiers and the little combo moves that you get. And the finishing moves, of course. And there's a few. A lot of reading on my part. You... You just excuse me if I start losing my voice, because it's going to happen. Okay, I've been reading stuff for a while. Ugh, done it during a short rest. Come on. Just, yeah. There we go. Move that around. Come on. There we go. Yeah. All right. Got it all in. That was hard work. Next. I have to read through a lot of information. Pound is a finisher. Oh, pound is a finisher. Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
So going back to the different um, combo chain information, there is the tier two finishing moves. Okay, remember we can go as high as tier three at level one. Okay, so tier two boosts. Here they are. Let me read them out to you. Bam, bam, bam. So tier two. <coughs> there are no finishing moves at tier one, by the way. So bone breaker. If you decide to end your combo chain, you can exert pressure on a limb and hear a crack. Double both your damage dice and ability modifier to your last hit. Oh my. Double your damage dice and your ability modifier to your last hit. Bone breaker. Well, that definitely sounds like a bone breaker to me. Okay, next is circle, circular attack. You spin your legs around to catch an, another opponent. After resolving damage from your last hit, make a single additional melee attack at the same tier against one other creature in reach. Uh, different than the one that um, escalated, the, escalated the combo chain. As part of the same action as the last hit. If you score a hit, you gain an additional identical attack this turn against a new creature different than the first and second. Okay, this attack cannot trigger a finisher. So, <clears throat> so this seems to me to be like a, a sweeping attack that, that connects with another target, essentially. So ground and pound. Let's have a look at ground and pound. I don't want to do that. Just want... Very annoying. Can I just highlight just that one? No, I can't, apparently. Apparently doesn't like me to do that. So be it. Ground pound. Ah, that's annoying. Okay, after resolving damage from your last hit, uh, you use your agility and strength to knock the target prone. Okay. The creature must be your size or smaller, so they can't be larger than you. Uh, you can can then either use a disengage action or have advantage on your next attack against the target. Oh, good lord. That would be handy. So you just need to be able to hit twice and then you can use ground pound, which is kind of nice. Is it at least twice or once? I feel like it's here, something like that. Okay, surging punch. You channel your willpower, focus your energy and let out a roar which is called a, like the key, or um, the, it, it's the shout, okay? It's the thing we got taught when we were doing martial arts. Um, it's supposed to scare people, it's supposed to also reinforce your chest. <laughs> After um, resolving damage from your last hit, the target is pushed five feet and has disadvantage on its next skill check or attack roll until the end of your next turn. The creature must be your size or smaller. Okay, so that's the surging punch. So now we have the tier three finishing moves. And this is the counter. Countering somebody is always fun. Okay, works very eff effectively, I've discovered, in real life. Uh, I don't know about in this game, though. Counter. You assume a defensive stance. After resolving damage from your last hit, you gain a plus two bonus to your armor class for one minute, which is 10 rounds. Or until you move. If a creature hits you, you can use a reaction to make a melee attack against the triggering enemy. Oh, okay. So it is, it's essentially a triggering attack, and the way that it's triggered is somebody hits you. If somebody hits you, instead of having to worry about getting an opportunity attack, you get to hit them back. Nice. Okay, cool. Next, this is still tier three. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it separately. Oh, there we go. Soul Fist. Uh, your enemy... Doesn't know it yet, but it's about to have an awful day. After resolving your last hit, you can disengage from the target. Additionally, the target can hit. Um, additionally, the target you hit last suffers additional damage equal to your attack ability score at the beginning of your next turn. Okay. Fine. All right. A bit more damage. Soul Fist. Spinning attack. Like a hurricane, either you spin in the spin the air or your enemy does. Either way, someone gets hurt. Okay. <laughs> um, after resolving damage from your last hit, make a melee attack 
at this tier to each enemy within 10 feet of you. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you miss, the creature still suffers your ability, ability modified damage. Really? So even if you miss, if hit, the, the, the target is prone, these attacks cannot trigger a finisher. Okay, so that doesn't finish um, trigger a finisher. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Still useful. Okay, Runbu. Double your last hit's regular damage dice and make additional... All right, so let's see. This is... There's a lot of damage, damage stuff going on here. Double your last hit's regular damage dice and make additional melee attacks at this tier against the same creature until you miss twice or hit four times. Okay. Okay, I get it. These attacks cannot trigger a finisher. Okay, so that's not a finisher either. That's just a, a, a maneuver. Okay, finishing moves. This is tier four, which you would not have access to at level one. But we're going to keep going since there seem to be people who are interested. Tier four finishing moves. So you would have to be, what level do you need to be to use a tier four finisher? I think it is level, is it level 4 or level 5? Level 4 or level 5? Uh, let me find it. So, uh, so level 4 tier, you'd be level 9 to get the tier 4 ones. Okay, alright. Here we go. The zone. After resolving damage from your last hit, your damage die remains at this tier regardless of your combo chain until you finish a short rest. Oh really? Good lord. So normally if the chain breaks, you have to start all over again, which means you go back down to a D6. This means you, you keep you keep it where it is, which is pretty powerful. Okay. Touch of death. After resolving damage from your last hit, until the target is killed or five minutes have passed, the target's speed is halved and it takes damage equal to half your level at the beginning of its turn. This damage value does not increase, if you inflict this finisher on the same target more than once. Okay. So if at level nine you get the you manage to get to a tier four tier four as your combo and you do this, you would be doing half your level, which is gonna be four. Four more points of damage. Okay. And they half their speed. Okay, I got it. Drop hammer. If you are grabbing the la okay. If you are grabbing the last creature you hit. It must be your size or smaller, so it can't be larger. After resolving damage, uh, you maneuver yourself to force your, your enemy into the ground. Make a strength athletics check with advantage and leap into the air. Oh, I know what it is. Um, you inflict additional damage equal to your roll as you crash down and back down, possibly creating an impact crater with cracks in the ground. So the... The drop the hammer, if you remember the Matrix, Morpheus jumps in the air and he does what is I think is supposed to be called the the eagle, there's some sort of eagle move, eagle hammer or something like that. It's basically the eagle move from the Matrix that Morpheus does, tries to do to, um, <laughs> to Neo and misses because it's so bloody obvious it's coming. Anyway, Zion... Uh, you achieve perfect clarity for a short while. After resolving damage from your last hit, all enemies in reach are pushed 10 feet. Oh, good lord. You cannot be shoved and are resistant to all damage types for 1 minute, 10 rounds. Are you... Oh, my God. That's pretty, pretty powerful. Okay, now to get the tier 5 and get into a tier 5, you have to be quite a high level to do so. So you need to be level 13 to be able to get as far as a combo in, into tier 5. But we'll look at the tier 5 since still seem to be people interested in seeing what's going on here. So I will keep reading it out. Here we go. Spirit Bomb. Um, one incredible strike. Triple your ability damage to your last hit. Triple your ability damage to your last hit. And if, your, uh, and if your size or smaller, the target is incapacitated for one minute. For one minute? Are you kidding me? Or until the target suffers damage or is moved in any way. So basically you doing triple your ability damage 
to your last hit, which must be your ability modifier, right? I'm assuming that's what he means. So you triple that for the, the blow, and as long as they are your size or smaller, the target is also incapacitated for one minute. There's no saving throw. There's no reoccurring saving throw. And the only way they don't come out of their being incapacitated, which is really bad for them, is they suffer damage. So you hit them and you do damage, or you move them in some way. You've essentially put them out of the fight. You can now leave them on the ground or wherever they are, crippled and crumpled over, and finish them off later on. It's ridiculously powerful. Okay, Falcon Punch. Your last attack is a critical hit. Okay, your last attack is a critical hit. So in other words, if you're doing the finish, doing this, it's a critical hit. You inflict maximum damage. Oh my god, you don't, you're telling me you don't even have to roll the dice. You just inflict maximum damage. And a creature your size or smaller is shoved 30 feet. Good lord. If the target hits an obs um, obstruction, it suffers additional damage equal to the remaining distance. Oh, I see. So if you push them back, um, say, 10 feet, and you've got 20 feet left, they would take 20, 20 damage, the remaining distance. The target must still pass through, ob um, the, the target may still pass through obst obstructions. Okay, so you could they could break through something. But in any case, even if they did, yes, they're still taking a buttload of damage. You, If they're right up against a wall, you could smack them through the wall and do an awful lot of horrible damage to them. That's very crazy. Uh, Shun, Shungu Satsu. You perform an incredibly powerful sequence of attacks. After resolving damage from your last hit, make six additional melee attacks. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Make six additional melee attacks at this tier against any number of enemies within 10 feet of you. 10 feet, not 5 feet, 10 feet. Each target can only be attacked a maximum of three times. Well, you just need to have at least two targets you can get to, right? Um, additionally, all attacks, on, all attacks on you miss until the beginning of your next turn. Are you... What... These attacks cannot trigger a finisher. So it doesn't even f trigger a finisher. So it doesn't even end it. Oh my god. Okay, all right. Um, limit break. After a, That is a really strong feature. I mean, you do only get it at level 13 and upward. But good lord. If you wanted to take somebody out, that's probably going to do it. Or take out a couple of people. Anyway, uh, limit break. After resolving damage from your last hit... You inflict additional damage equal to the hit points you are currently down from your total. Oh, really? Maximum 50, 50 hit points. So if your maximum hit points was, say, I don't know, 120, and you had lost 20 hit points and you were down to 100, um, you would you'd do an additional, say, 20 points of damage is a limit break. If you lose a lot more points, so you say you lost 50 hit points from your 120, then now you're down to, well, you can you can take, take they, they'll take 50 hit points, potentially, if you're down by at least 50. Good Lord. That's rather powerful. Okay. All right. Well, we've seen how that works. That's some, that's some crazy stuff. That really is. That's absolutely nuts. Yeah, Captain Finisher. Captain Falcon. <laughs> Surge. Uh, Pound as a finisher. All right, so let me let me do the, the finishing touches to our character sheet. Because we have, we have selected everything that we needed to sort of look at. I've covered everything. I'm about to lose my voice, so I really need to do the maths for this. And we also need to probably get some gear. Um, do I need to do that now? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that now. If I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it at all, am, am I? And uh, that would be a problem. All right. So, by the way, martial artists don't have any key points. Did you notice? <laughs> there are no key points. You don't have to track that. None of that stuff exists. All right. Let's let's go to one one six. <clears throat> you get one small arms. So. We're going to go to small arms, and you're going to select something, and I'll tell you what you can have. 
So one handed small arm, so you can have for going to have an air dart pistol for 150. You could have a break action shot pistol for 300. You could have a capsicum spray for 55. Uh, you could have a grappling hook at 50, uh, at 50. You could have a high caliber auto loader at 250. You can have a low caliber auto loader at 250. You can have a machine pistol at 300. That's not outside of your, your yeah. You can have a one-handed grenade launcher. Oh, good Lord. So a martial artist can also have a grenade launcher. This is going to cause problems. Um, a pocket pistol at 200 if you want that. A revolver at 150. So you've got a few choices. So hashtag pick a one-handed, one hand, small, arms gun all right pick something pick something people out of that you can only spend maximum of 300 okay that's part of the loadout for this next we're going into to two-handed small arms we're not allowed to have two-handed small arms so we move past this uh, heavy weapons we don't get that and we don't get super heavy weapons so forget that one moving along um, next on our list is, ch -ch -ch -ch. come on, scroll me, baby, scroll me, scroll me, uh, 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 ammunition, we'll worry about that right now, um, it's other, that's more ammunition, ah, melee weapons, so we get a simple melee weapon, we get to pick one of these, um, so we can have brass knuckles, we can have a collapsible baton, we can have a fighting knife ba bayonet if we want, or a plug bayonet, okay? Air dart. An air dart pistol. Alright, I'm fine with that, air dart pistol. Dart pistol. Unless somebody wanted something else, you only get one one of these. Okay, you don't get gonna, you're not gonna get two. So make a decision about if you don't want that and you want the grenade launcher. Let me know. Um, next, so now we need to select a melee weapon. Pick a simple melee weapon. Melee weapon. I can change this out if you decide to. Deplorus Rex, hello. I like to watch me some um, Bruce Leroy. <laughs> Fair enough. You can. That's fine. I don't mind. That's cool. Uh, so, yes. So, those are the choices you have. Brass knuckles, collapsible baton, fighting knife bayonet, or a plug bayonet. So, pick one of those. Uh, and then armor. We get armor after that. Dun, 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 dun. That's demolitions, don't worry about them. Demolition stuff, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, I need the armor and so forth so I can figure out all the rest of the numbers. Hello, Deplorus Rex. Okay, so you get, as part of your choice, based off what we've done, just so you, you are aware, people, okay, we, we have selected the fighting form strength, which means... You are not just proficient with light armor, but you're also proficient with all medium armor and all heavy armor. But the loadout states you can only only spend 300. Your, your limit is 300. <gasps> I doubt we're going to find medium armor or heavy armor that's 300. Okay. You want the baton? Um, you want the baton? Okay. All right. We can put down the baton. Baton, oh baton. We'll knock some heads with a baton. Okay, we've got that one. And now, armor. So this is the armor you can afford. Remember, your limit is 300. You have access to light armor, medium armor, and heavy armor, which is just nuts. But anyway, you can have leather armor. You can have ballistic armor, synthetic armor, Okay, it looks to me like ballistic armor is slightly better. You can have advanced armor. Uh, no, you can't have any of the advanced. It's, it's all too expensive. 
You can have medium starting armor, which would be the force body vest at 50, or you could have the armored combat suit at 200, okay? Or you can even have the armored survival suit at 300. So there are a few choices. In terms of advanced armor, you can't have any of the advanced armor, medium armor, because it's too expensive. So we move on. If you want heavy armor, which would be quite bizarre, I have to say, because your dexterity no longer comes into play whatsoever. You can have a flak long coat at 100. You can have carbine armor at 200. You can have tactical body armor at 300. Okay, and that is the limit in terms of your armor. So pick some armor. Hashtag. Pick some armor. Uh, $300 limit. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, you don't want that one? You don't want the disadvantage? You want to keep your stealth in, in good shape? That's fine. You don't have to have it. If you want to keep away from that, I would suggest you're probably going to be better off going with the... Um, uh, where is it? Um... Honestly think that the ballistic armor is probably the better option if you're going to have a high dexterity. Either the ballistic armor or take something like the uh, the force body vest. But you're you're going to be maxing out your your, de your, your armor class at 15. Do you know what I mean? Scroll back up a little bit. Okay, I have scrolled up back a little bit so you can see. So you can see what I'm what I'm talking about. Those are probably the the best choices if you're looking for avoiding disadvantage on stealth, the force body vest, or take something because you get 13 plus your dexterity modifier, and if your dexterity modifiers are two, then that's as far as it's going to go. So you're going to get 15. Um, it is potentially if you've got a high dexterity, and this character's got some really high scores, it's possible to do pretty well with something like your um, your ballistic armor. Ballistic armor it is. All right. Ballistic armor. All right, let's put the ballistic armor on. Bat it. And I'll drop that in. And I just need to make sure I have the formula for the ballistic armor, which is 12 plus dex. Ballistic armor. 12 plus dex. And we'll work that out once we've got our numbers. Okay, cool. Next, moving back, I need to get the numbers for the bayonets and the baton, not the demolitions, baton and the um, collapsible baton. All right, the collapsible baton, that's what we were after. It's a D4. D4 and you didn't want the knife so that's fine there we go collapsible baton and the air dart pistol so copy we'll drop this into here paste unarmed whoopsies unarmed and that'll be 1d6 plus whatever. That's just the first string of your attack. But anyway, there'll be some other things going on there with that. So this is that. Uh, and we need the collapsible baton. Come on, collapsible baton. Copy. Drop that in there. Paste. It's 1d4. One the four for the collapsible baton plus whatever. We'll get to that shortly. And then I just gotta make sure I got the air dart. Which will be very quiet. Air dart. They won't even know you were there. Okay. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Raw hide. Uh, super weapons, heavy weapons, two handed, single. Okay. Dart is special. Okay, so that's a, the damage on that is special. 
Okay, all right, let's just go here, special. And you can have poison darts, I suppose. So you can poison them quietly, done. Okay, cool. Right, now we've got a few things we need to deal with. Uh, if you remember, with our um, birth, we actually need to make some choices about where we put stuff, okay? So um, the first first thing I'm going to do is bring us back to there as part of our birth. And we, we selected the splice. Birth and the splice is here. Come on. No. Splice mice. Splice my mice, 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 splice, splice, splice. No. Splice. Here. Okay. So your wisdom score increases by two. Uh, no, not, that's wrong. That's for the bat. You increase one ability score by one. And because we are taking currently, we've we selected the splice for the rat, okay, as closest to the mouse that I could find, uh, you get your dexterity increases by two. So we have to decide where these numbers are going to go, all right? So hashtag, uh, what uh, numbers do we assign? to ability scores. Okay, so what numbers do we assign to ability scores? And um, I'm going to give you the ability score numbers, so hashtag ability score. Now the numbers that we have are the following. We have a, let's just scroll down so you can see it all. We have an 18, we have a 17, uh, we have a 16, one, two, uh, and one, two, three. We have three 15s, oh good lord. 18, 17, 16, 15, 15, 15. Uh, so some crazy scores there. Hello, Phil. How are you? How are you doing today? Okay, people. Those of you who are here, decide what what, what number you want to be strength, what number you want to have dex. You might want to just list them as highest to lowest. It'll probably be the easiest way to decide or assign them. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, people. I saw somebody has was commenting on the fixing the fairy uh, live stream and how I had changed the fairy uh, for 5e. And um, they were saying, now I want to play a fairy. I'm so glad to hear that somebody appreciated what I was doing with the fairy. <laughs> Uh, sorry, people. I, 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 it tickles my fancy sometimes, these things. So so a lot of these numbers I can fill in once I have the other information. But I do need you to decide where you want these ability scores to actually be assigned. Okay? So dex, strength. Remember, we are a strength-based martial artist. It would probably make no sense to go dex as the highest at 18. But also, too... Just so it's you're aware, you know you. <laughs> just so that you are aware, the rat gets a plus two increase to dexterity score anyway. So you could wind up if you go dex, you could wind up with a twenty in dex. A twenty in dex is pretty high. It's it's not not small. And even even if you go strength seventeen, okay. Um, if you decide to increase your, your, your strength from 17 to 18 because you get to increase one score by one point, it's still going to pump come out pretty good. Does that make sense? If people don't vote, I'm going to just take Fred's suggestion and that'll be that. Okay. All right. So it looks like I'm moving these rounds now. And uh, the other question, once you've decided what you want to do with them, um, what... Ability score, what ability score, ability, ability score do we 
increase by one? That's the other question. So yeah, if you if you go, um, I mean, it's probably not going to matter too much, because you're never going to get your strength to a twenty anyway at level one. So it really wouldn't matter. Dex first. All right. It looks like that's how it's going to work. It's fine. It actually doesn't matter too much, does it? Really? Who care? Who cares in the end? Who cares? All right. Dex it is. Dexing it higher. Yeah, so dex there, and then 17 is the strength, which is fine. I've done that. Strength, and strength, if you decide to increase that again by making that the plus one, then it's going to be an 18, so it's going to be a lot higher. Uh, then you said con, so con would be a 16. Oh, I can't see anything with these glasses on when I'm looking at there. 16. Uh, yeah, I exactly. So, yeah, it, it's it's fine. We'll just do it the way you had suggested the first time. Uh, and then Charisma is going to be 15. And then Wisdom is going to be 15. And Int is going to be 15, since we've got so many 15s. 15, 15. It's a crazy character. Okay, all right, so dex, strength, con, 15, 15, 15. Okay, I got them all in right now. Dexterity, if we do that, because we are a spliced rat, it goes up to 20 now. And if we're increasing the strength to by one, because we get to increase one of our things, our ability scores by one as part of being a splice, Okay, increase one ability score by uh, and increase it by one, so that'll be our strength, and now you have an 18 there. Okay, Whew, some big numbers. Okay, so let's transfer all this over and do the maths for you. Uh, that's a 20. That's a 16. Uh, that's a 15. 15. 15. Okay, so. 18 is a plus 4, nothing wrong with a plus 4, dexterity is a plus 5, plus 5, <laughs> okay, con is plus 3, okay, this is plus 2 for 15, plus 2's, put them in, plus 2, and plus 2. Um, yeah, always plus and um, push up an odd to an even if you can. Makes sense, absolutely. Um, and plus two. Okay. All right, so I got all that. Now I need to do my saving throws. Um, oh, we can do our initiative is going to be a plus five. Okay, which is crazy. Uh, our saving throws. Strength is a plus four and it's proficient, so that's two. So that's four and two together comes to six for that one. Dexterity is a 5 plus the 2 because you're proficient, so that's a plus 7 for that one. Good lord. Con is going to be just a plus 3 because that's the con modifier. And all the other ones are just modifiers of 2, so that'll just transfer straight over to our saving throw. Saving throws are almost done. That was easy enough. Okay, next. Uh, dexterity is plus 5 and Acrobatics is a trained skill, so 5 and plus 2 is a 7 for that one. Dex, 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 dex. Dexterity, dexterity, dexterity. Ah, sleight of hand, it'll be a plus 5 for that one. And our stealth is also a plus 5 for that one. Okay, cool. Uh, I think I got all the dexes in. Next, wisdom. Wisdom is just a plus 2, so that's animal handling, plus 2. Modifier, plus two for wisdom, 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 wisdom. Our insight, plus two. Uh, wisdom, medicine, plus two. Wisdom, perception. Oh, proficiency as well, because so proficiency is plus two. And the bonus for wisdom is two, so that's a four for that one. And moving along, we've got that one done. Uh, wisdom, survival is plus two. Okay, next. 
Intelligence, just going to be a straight out plus two. For Arcana, Athletics, we don't deal with right now. Uh, deal with Intelligence. De Demolitions, just going to be a plus two. Um, engineering, we are trained and we have a plus two for that, so that's a plus four. And History, it's just going to be a plus two. Where's the other Intelligence stuff here? Plus two. More intelligence, nature's plus two. And religion plus two. Science is plus two. And have I got them all? Yes, I have. Okay, cool. Next one. Uh, strength is a modifier is four and we're proficient. So that's going to be a plus six for athletics. Plus six. Sorry, good lord. And I don't think there's anything else for strength. I think that's it. Next one is, oh, we didn't do the intelligence for the computer use, which is a plus two. Okay. Charisma next. Uh, plus two for charisma. Deception is just going to be a plus two. Uh, intimidation charisma, plus two. Uh, performance charisma, plus two. Persuasion, plus two for charisma. So that's that. And that's all those numbers in there. L... Perception is a 4, make the passive perception is going to be a 14, 10 plus 4 is 14, we got that in. Our um, ballistic armor is a 12 plus your dex, our dex is a 5 plus the, um, the 12, means our armor class should be sitting at a very pretty 17, and we do not have disadvantage if we're going to stealth anywhere. So that's all that done. Um, our hit points. I believe our hit points are a D10 at level 1, and you roll a D10 if you are going up higher or you use averages. Um, but for that right now, I don't think we need to worry too much. So that's 10 plus our con modifier, which is 3. So that's a 13. 13 for our monk. At level 1, you get 13 hit points. It's like you're playing a barbarian. Okay, temporary hit points, don't worry about that. Uh, our hit dice, how does that work? So we get one of those, and it's a D10, 1D10, plus 3 for the con modifier when we use it. Okay, cool, got that done. Uh, we need to do the attack bonus. So ranged weapons is... Your dexterity modifier plus your proficiency bonus for your air dart. So that's two and five is a plus seven to hit. Good lord. All right. You've gone with strength rather than dex as an option, uh, which is fine because when you get to level four, you can increase your strength to 20 if you really want to. <laughs> that's going to be crazy at level four. Anyway, so that it will be four plus two because you're proficient with the um, collapsible baton comes out at a mighty plus six which is very high for a level one character unarmed it's still a plus six to hit your damage that you do is based off your strength not your dexterity so that'll be a plus four for that one and a plus four for this one and i just need to check because i believe there were some additional benefits for picking the strength option um, so if I go over here, yeah, so if I go over here and I go to 80, something like that, yeah, we go, this is it, uh, moving down, moving down, moving down, uh, so first level, select either dexterity or strength as your ability for attack and damage rolls, so if we pick that one, so we did that, so what are the benefits on the strength? Uh, you gain a plus one bonus to all melee damage rolls. So we have to add that in on top of our plus four. Oh my good lord, it didn't make too much of a difference, did it? So we still get a plus five to our collapsible baton. And our unarmed strike still get a plus five because we're going to add one to that as well. The air dart doesn't get anything added to it from that, but that doesn't matter. you proficient with medium and heavy armor. We've already got that. You have advantage on when attempting to shove a target. So we've already got that. I don't need to build that in. Um, we've done the armor class stuff. Uh, okay. 
So this this wouldn't even be the most optimal way. I mean, if you're looking at optimizing, this wouldn't even be the most optimal way to build the character necessarily. And yet it is still bat crazy good. We did roll some high numbers. I don't think it really would matter. Experience zero, NA for that one. We don't need to worry about that. And um, did I miss anything? Armor class, that, 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 that. All my numbers are in. I've got that in. I'm not going to worry about the origin. Don't have time. Okay, I think we've got it all done. That we have made a martial artist. <sighs> very uh, Mortal Kombat like, if you ask me. It looks very much like we're just playing Mortal Kombat, uh, which is nothing wrong with. I mean, I like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> so let's end this poll. See what people have got here in the vote. Voting. I'm interested. Have you made a martial artist character for Ultra Modern 5? No, 69%. Maybe you will now. Uh, just watching, 23%. Yes, 7% out of 13 votes. Nice to know. Look, this went well. Um, we will be back next week. I think next week we're doing a medic. We're doing the medic class for Ultra Modern 5. Uh, but till then, um, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're going um, to we're gonna say goodbye. And I've got to go to work. So I want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons who support me so I can keep doing this. I really want to thank Chris Dayas for sending me all the information. It really has helped to have the book, the, you know, the, the fillable, P, uh, um, fillable character sheet and the PDF of um, Ultra Modern 5. And uh, he sent me all the artwork and I just couldn't use it because it was Photoshop files. But hey, he's really been very supportive around the whole thing. Um, I want to also thank those of you who took part in the poll, watching and listening, but very much those people who have been in the chat giving you feedback. Fred Huber, Cal Rell, thank you for giving your feedback. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Phil for, um, for, for, for piping up. Deplorus Rex, and I believe Matthew, thank you, Matthew, for, uh, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, Nemo, and I believe Nacho Nacho Man and Derp, who are both patrons as well. I really do appreciate you showing up for these um, these character build uh, live streams. Makes a big difference. It means I'm not alone on my own. Uh, Dungeons and Chronics almost forgot Dungeons and Chronics, but not not today, not today. So wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours, and hey, till next time. Maybe try a martial artist. Why not? Keep rolling those twenties.